Hi guys, today's the start of something a little different for me in this vlog. Traditionally my focus has been on 3D printing or additive based manufacturing. This series however will focus on the exact opposite, subtractive machining for CNC mill. CNC machining is one of the most used methods for production of metal parts worldwide and it's now possible on a 3D printed, come on, you don't think I would have forgotten about that, CNC machine. This series will be focused on using the Millennium Mill, a design based on the Open Builds Mini Mill. Jake, the lead designer, has been kind enough to lend me his original machine to show you all of what is capable. The Millennium Mill version 1.5 no longer uses any of the original components from the Open Builds design and is therefore a build from scratch uh, machine, um, but with a much higher targeted performance than the Mini Mill. Designed from the ground up to be 3D printable, have the ability to cut aluminium and other softer materials. This project is accessible to anybody with a 3D printer as there are no custom metal parts required to get up and running. There are no full kits currently available and the self-sourcing cost is around £1,000 depending on motor size and spec of the spindle. The version I've got is using some of the 3D printed parts and a mix of aluminium plates courtesy of Fabrico. Do check out his page. That would support many open source projects would struggle to get off the ground, um, so hit up his shop. To test this mill out, we're going to be using the Titans of CNC fundamental course parts. They use these parts to teach professional machinists on professional grade machines. But I wanted to see what was possible on a 3D printed hobby grade machine. We're going to kick the series off with the Titan 1M, a relatively simple part made from 1 by 2 inch bar stock. As part of the tutorials, you model the part and then program the toolpaths. I will let you watch those in your own time as Titans of CNC cover this already. I will describe the settings used on this Millennium Mill as they vary a lot from those used on an industrial mill. Right, let's watch the machining.
gonna do is fly, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah I think that we've all had enough What keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons cry, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah you enjoyed the machining videos here is the finished part and as you can see it's nice and shiny and um, too shiny in fact it's making the videoing hard um, overall this went very well um, most of the issues with this part are actually down to mistakes on my behalf um, so the first and most major one of those issues is this end the piece of stock material that I used was just a tad too short and uh, yeah, the end just didn't get machined, so it's just left as rough cut. And as you can see, the two holes at the end also just cut through that edge a little. Uh, next up, we've got the top surface is a bit a bit rough in places, so one of the bolts on the back of the CNC came loose, and um, just on that final facing operation. And unfortunately, that has sort of just ruined that top surface finish. Um, that said, overall I'm very happy with the performance. The part is dimensionally very good, um, within about 0.1 millimeters accuracy. Um, I was unable to tap the holes on the CNC machine and opted to just hand tap those afterwards. Um, one of the other differences you'll notice I milled those holes out as opposed to drilling. Um, the machine just isn't really stiff enough um, to do drilling at 5 millimeter diameter. Um, the adaptive tool pathing for clearing out this pocket has left a really nice finish um, and was really quick. The total machining time for this was about 30 minutes, um, including removing all the stock off the back. So overall I'm very happy. Anyway, stay tuned for episode 2 um, while I try and do something a little bit more complicated. See you there.